All right, in this lesson, this is part two of our shrinkage discussion. In the last lesson, we talked a little bit about the theory and understanding of shrinkage. In this lesson, we're actually going to walk you through an example of how we actually calculate shrinkage for our, our, from our perpetual inventory system. So if you're ready, let's look at the example prop here. So a company A uses a perpetual inventory system, which shows that the company purchased $185,000 worth of inventory during the year. Last year's balance sheet shows an ending inventory of 84,000. So last year's balance sheet would be this year's beginning inventory balance. According to this year's book, the cost of goods sold was updated to $208,000. So again, if I kind of write a little bit on here. This 208,000 represents cost of goods sold. Uh, 84,000 is beginning inventory or beginning balance. And then 185 would be our purchases for the period. So those are three important numbers that we're going to need in step number one. So an inventory accounting firm came and counted all the inventory in the store and found inventory on the floor to be valued at $56,500. So what they're saying here is that this inventory company came in, counted all of their units, which is usually what happens at a big box retailer like Walmart and Target. They'll have an inventory firm come in and all they specialize in is just counting everything in the store. So they come in and count and they count $56,500 worth of merchandise at the uh, company's cost. So these are not retail prices. This is what the company paid for these items, 56500 So the question says is calculate shrinkage for the company and prepare the adjusting journal entry for the shrinkage. All shrinkage is ex to be expensed in the cost of goods sold. So we've got three steps here. Step number one is we're going to calculate the expected ending inventory. Step number two is we're going to calculate the difference between actual and expected, and then we're going to prepare that adjusting journal entry for shrinkage. So um, I do not have this on each one of the next screens. So if you need to screenshot this, or if you have the notes in front of you, it's a great way to keep it there, but I can't fit all of this on uh, the next couple of screens. So just know that if you're wondering where the numbers are coming from, they're all coming from here. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about step number one. So step number one is we're going to calculate the expected ending inventory. So I'm going to use our ending inventory equation here. And then we're going to try to plug in all the numbers based on what the example prompt has told us. So beginning inventory in our prompt said that we had $84,000 worth of inventory last year. So it becomes this year's beginning inventory. Then from there, we're going to add purchases. The purchases totaled $185,000. If we add those two numbers together, we get $269,000 as far as our goods available for sale. Now from there, we need to subtract how much goods we've sold. Well, according to our perpetual inventory system, we sold $208,000. Okay. Parentheses just means minus two. So I'm using parentheses instead of a minus sign. $208,000. So that would give us an ending inventory of $61,000. This would be our expected ending inventory. So we expect to have $61,000 of inventory. Well, we know we don't have that, but that's what we should have based on what our books tell us. So in our books right now, we have an inventory balance of 61,000 and that would be a debit. So going on to step number two, we're going to calculate the differences between the actual and expected inventory. So we're going to start with the expected inventory. We expect there to be $61,000 of inventory. Now, based on what our inventory accounting firm has told us, they only counted $56,500. So the actual inventory was $56,500. If we were going to subtract those two numbers, you'll get $4,500 and that right there would be our shrinkage. So we are missing $4,500 of inventory from our store. Now, now that we have this number, we now need to do the journal entry to reduce our inventory and book our goods so that our numbers are up to date based on what we actually have. So to do this, we are going to look at the journal entry. So we said 4,000 
500. Now the journal entry, again, uh, we, like we said in the last lesson, is we're gonna debit the cost of goods sold for shrinkage, and we will reduce the inventory. Well, inventory is usually a debit balance, so to reduce it, we would need to credit inventory. In addition, cost of goods sold is an expense account. Because we're increasing the expense here, the increase in expense would be a debit. So we'll debit cost of goods sold, and I am abbreviating here, cost of goods sold, for $4,500 and inventory for $4,500 as well. So that's the journal entry that we are going to make because of shrinkage, okay? So that is an example of shrinkage, just walking you through um, the calculation of the expected ending inventory and then looking at what actually happened against what should be in our books and then finding the difference and then taking that difference and doing the journal entry to make sure our books are up to date. A couple of things here. You will be given pretty much all the elements to be able to calculate ending inventory and you must be given the actual inventory to be able to do this calculation. Now, we could trade this up a little bit by giving you what shrinkage is and then you have to then um, reverse engineer the balance. Uh, so just understand what you're trying to do in the problem in order to fulfill whatever we are trying to do in shrinkage. So that is a walkthrough of a shrinkage example. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you press the like button below. And if you're looking for worksheets that go along with all of these lessons, head over to my website at patricklymsa.com or click in the link in the far right. And I've got your next lesson right over here. So just click that link and it'll take you to that video. So until then, we'll see you in the next lesson.